All right, Grant, pre-show shenanigans. Um, you know what? I, I knew, I know that it's not a part of our uh, curriculum, as I would as I would call it, um, but we do have to talk about the WNBA for this pre-show. Um, so yesterday, uh, in any other fashion, I would congratulate congratulate the New York Liberty. However, I am not. Um, Grant, we, we have a Kings-Lakers situation on our hands. Okay. The end result of this game... First of all, there was video in the Liberty uh, huddle, timeout huddle, where the Liberty coach specifically was like, if they do anything, if they touch you at all, flop. They're going to call it for you, all right? Just embellish it. Then ESPN cut out the audio so you couldn't hear anything after that. Then the Wait, refs... So you're pers- telling me the WNBA is rigged. Uh, go on. Then the refs, the refs proceeded to call a non-existent foul that tied the game and sent it to OT. Then the Liberty ended up winning. Then... When the Liberty won, the WNBA commissioner walked out to the court wearing a full dress that was the entire skyline of New York. Somebody want to tell me how any of that legally happened? I know you're riled up because if I have this correct, the Minnesota Lynx were taken down. They were. And And this was Minnesota's ring. So... Minnesota, the, the Lynx are are historically the best team in WNBA history. Like they have the most chips. They're the Patriots of of the WNBA. Okay, okay. but wasn't but, aware. Not gonna lie, but but I, it's funny. I will say that the, the, they just walked out of New York. Got like that's. A, but this is gonna be like we're gonna have a sixty minutes on this in like ten years. Right? Right, like I'm, it's gonna come. Out. I'm gonna. I. There's I'm too going, much stuff going on. I'm here. going to have to investigate into <laughs> Caitlin too much Park stuff. and Angel Reese games. Now, um, my favorite thing was at the end. Uh, I actually don't. Didn't Angel Reese win rookie of the year? Right? No, 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 no. It went to the rightful, the rightful okay. queen. Went I just rightful. remember all season. I, I think I remember hearing at one point the WNBA was debating putting in a second two rookie of the years. Oh, I did not hear Angel that. Reese. I was hearing that. Uh, and like just the montages of of Angel Reese just and and when I mean brick Everett, I mean Oh, I've seen not even a shot. Like like literally throwing it, it's a layup. Missing the backboard completely and just hitting the bottom of the rim, it just bounces right back to her. Where it's like I might I might yeah, get you some wonder heat. how how you have so many rebounds. I might get some heat for this, but I like that quality of basketball is is worse than JV high school basketball. Hey, talk. It's talk certainly about worse it. than talk varsity high school basketball, but hey, I'm going to go Michael JV. Michael Jordan never made varsity. So now you're calling Angel Reese well, Michael well, Jordan basketball. Well, Michael Jordan uh, complains about not making varsity. He was a freshman when he did not make varsity. That's that's what MJ was mad about. He made it as a sophomore, Everett, and he was probably the best player on the team. But he was mad because he didn't make it as uh, as a freshman, and like use that as a storyline later in his career as like for motivation. He's like, yeah, I, I I was didn't make varsity in high school, so I always keep that chip on my shoulder. You were a freshman, Michael Jeffrey. Uh, relax. Um, but <laughs> yeah, just the quality of basketball is uh. Hilar- it's honestly very entertaining to watch in the WNBA because every basket matters that much more because there isn't that much score. Uh, like quick, just college basketball NBA thing. Like I like watching college basketball more than the NBA because it's like, you have no idea what's going to like March Madness is my favorite time of the year because like we're talking about 18 year old kids playing like, If you expect an 18-year-old freshman one and done about to go to the NBA, if you expect him to consistently drop 30 every single night in March Madness, you're ridiculous. Like that just does not (laughs) that the only the only guy who did that was Zion. Like that just does not happen. Like no 18-year-old just consistently puts up 30 a game. I well, 18-year-old, yes. 21-year-old, um, Zach Eady, uh, who's a foot taller than everybody, that's different. That doesn't count. Um, but like in the NBA, it's like I try to explain this to my roommate, but like if a dude's wide open in the NBA, it's in. 
like it's almost guaranteed in well in college, well unless it it's hot. danny green in the nba yeah okay da- obviously something's that but like for the jonas direct bow if he's left wide open in the corner you can or if comfortably it's say if it's, it's Anderson, more likely that'll go it. in yeah we have some exceptions ever there's obviously some <laughs> exceptions but like i mean <laughs> Uh, in a preseason basketball game a couple nights ago, like Dalton Connect scored 20 straight points on like 12 possessions, like was not missing. And it's just like dudes in the NBA can just do that. Yeah, that is true. Like uh, any... No, th- hey, like, I, hey, I want to establish no slander to the WNBA, though. Only slander to the WNBA commissioner and the referees. That's, I, I, I would say I just... I fu- I think it's funny how they're like like I'm very curious if we can go back like if the WNBA rigged games against Caitlin Clark because like they want to push the agenda. I, Caitlin I would, Clark's not I would good. Not, I will not I would be shocked. Not be surprised. But legitimately speaking, from like we Minnesota sports has seen it. Like I had a referee literally take out my player last year. No, yeah, that you was the greatest about- moment in the history of ref. <laughs> ju- well, wanna- well, Everett, I would say that's the biggest moment of refing. Um, incompetence uh, until the Texas Georgia game this past weekend, where the Texas student well, section well, complained into, and no, cried no, and got is, a call revert. I've never seen that in my that, life. That is elite. That is called twelfth man. Texas no, no, no. A&M. Oh, we'll see you later. I'm not Seahawks, calling we'll out. See you later. I'm not calling out the Texas. By the way, section we'll, at we'll, all we'll get we'll get to that. They but deserve I have to have seen, that call. I have seen that Texas students have been getting emails saying they're no longer allowed to go to games. Yeah, that, that, that's my, my friends. Found out some info on Texas. That. I'm ashamed. I am. I am disappointed in you. Yeah, I'm I, I've heard some you. updates on that too, but you know, what? We'll, we'll we'll just get into it now. But, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, we we got a lot to talk about uh, with, with baseball too, of course. But uh, you know, we'll we'll, we'll start off with football. Yeah, WNBA is rigged. Uh, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the War Boy Podcast. Today is episode 267, and the Los Angeles Dodgers will face the New York Yankees in the 2024. World Series, the Dodgers. Uh, I can't believe it, but they have advanced to the World Series uh, despite the injuries going on. Uh, we'll we'll get into MLB in, in a little bit. We'll we'll start off with a uh, uh, college and NFL, but uh, yeah, the Texas Georgia refs. I've never seen something like that in my life. Now I will say this: that should have been an interception on the field. No, that was not. Uh, I believe they called it defensive holding. Uh, at the time, yes, it, it was I not. So. And uh, also, uh, Ohio State fan chiming in. If we can reverse pass interference calls, um, I'm I'm looking at you, Big Ten refs. I'm I'm looking at you. Was Jer- did Jeremiah push off? I don't know. You tell me, Big Ten refs. You tell me. Look like the Oregon guy initiated contact well, within five yards. I will yards. say but it hey, is hey. just subjectively different that the game was in Texas. Oh, oh, oh 100%. 100%. 100%. And I, I, I will said say, that after the, the game. Fact, like, that shouldn't matter, but it does. Refs the are The fact human. that this happened in Texas, the fact, the fact that this happened, period, I guarantee you it's not going to be the last time we see it happen this season. Oh, no. Zero chance. Oh, uh-uh. SEC, SEC refs and this I will year say, especially got to be working overtime. You know what? I respect the refs for reversing the call out of the fear of their livelihood alone. That I respect. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, you got to, I mean, hey, now, if I thought I was going to see the mic have a chance of course, to get killed on the way out. There, I, there may or may not have been a precedent set that if you throw a temper tantrum and start raining down beer cans on the field, you'll get a call reverse. That may or may not be the precedent set. After well, hey, this game. it was water bottles. I want to. I want to emphasize the fact that it was not alcohol containers rained down on the field. That's only in Philadelphia, right? That's only Eagles fans. We don't accept. I'm those quite people. water quite bottles. Quite sure there were uh, there were beer. Maybe cans, a though, few, but, but it was uh, majority well, water. I will bottles. say this, uh, Philly fans, you are public hey, enemy number one. But ever, you know what? Grant, I found you- I forgot about this in 2021. Tennessee was playing Ole Miss. It was Lane Kiffin's return to Knoxville, return to Tennessee. Uh, and at one point in the game, students rained down beer cans. Uh, I did not realize this or remember it, but the entire Tennessee student section was removed from the game, was literally ejected. <laughs> I, I forgot this happened, but yeah, yeah no, no, this isn't the what? first That's, time the SEC I'm going to be honest, if that, if that ever happens in a game where a, a either one 
students are told they no longer can t- can attend games because of it, or two, all of the students are removed. I single-handedly and completely disappointed in the university, the athletic department, and the president of the university because the one nice, the, the beautiful thing about college athletics is that factor. And if you get, if you screw someone up, if something happens and that's the result, hey, we live with it. All right. We, we live and let on. You're just going to have to roll with some beer cans on the, on the ground. But, you know, I will also say maybe there were some Texas fans that threw their beer cans, but I also want to respect the ones that kept it and threw the water bottles instead. All right. That's priorities. Priorities number one. Yeah. Yeah. Priorities. Or, Finish your beer quicker so you can throw your you empty, throw can. empty can. Come on. Come empty on. Can. Come on. <laughs> so it can go both ways. But yeah, it uh, could go either way. Also about that game, I was I was as a as you know, I, I, I always look at linemen when I watch football. I was blown away with what Kirby Smart uh, and that Georgia defense was doing to, to Texas up front. I'd say a big storyline going into this, everyone thought Texas was for sure one of the best O-lines in the country. Everyone points to the, the Michigan, Michigan game, ironically, and they they just lost to Illinois. So uh, I'm not sure how much value we should be putting into that Michigan win. Uh, I, I thought... Not much. I, I thought after, like, Texas, or not... Te- I thought after USC, where Michigan still won, I, I thought even after that game, the country was aware, like... Hey, Michigan can't do a simple function of the football game, the forward pass. Uh, it should be a little difficult for them to win games. Somehow that that hasn't happened yet. Somehow Michigan was like a five-point favorite over Illinois this past weekend. Uh, but yeah, Texas, maybe a little bit overrated, Everett. And I'd say we are I will be honest, we are I, itching I, I don't... quite close to 2007 territory. Uh, 2007, that year, uh, I believe... Uh, seven number one teams ranked in AP poll ended up losing that year, uh, which is the most ever. That year was complete haywire, absolutely nuts. Uh, I I have a feeling we're we're gonna get something like that this year in Everett. Also, while we're at it, thank thank goodness there's a twelve team playoff because I don't know how you could pick a fourteen playoff this year. Uh, picking a fourteen no, playoff this year would be. Crazy. I, look, this is this is what I will say. All right, so let, let's talk some SEC football. Right, some 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 real man football. Okay, um, we talked about this the other episode. We were like, all shit breaks loose if Georgia wins and Bama loses. Right, like we literally said. I said in that episode for the SEC rankings, if Georgia wins and Bama loses, all hell breaks loose for the playoffs, for the rankings, for the SEC, for the championship game in the SEC. And that quite literally has come to full. Well, I'd like, say I have, Bama is right now there on the outside looking in for that SEC. Well, no, yeah, but that, that, with, uh, remember the whole point. The whole point of that exercise when we were talking about it was could Vanderbilt actually be ranked above Alabama? That was part of that's where that conversation started was just seeing how those schedules mixed. And I mean, if we look at this right now, right, we have no I'm undefeated sure teams. Alabama's going to be, huh? We have no undefeated teams left overall. In oh, the yeah, SEC. no, no undefeated. undefeated conference. The funniest but thing, it, though, the two undefeated teams in, in SEC conference play right now are the Texas A&M Aggies and the LSU Tigers. Uh, what what world are we living in? What? LSU yeah, I and I A&M. I, 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 don't, I, I don't I wrote understand. them off. I wrote them both off after week one when they lost. Um, <laughs> like, the good news it, is they, they to, play this weekend. Yeah, they Notre, they Notre Dame beat Notre A&M. Dame and, USC beat LSU. That's not looking like a good loss. horrible losses, uh, by the way. Yeah, well, and, Notre Dame's not as bad. but Well, I'll say this. Notre Dame is slowly chugging along. They've looked very good since Northern now, Illinois, directional he, Illinois. Um, the they've deal. looked much better. And we, they're probably going to be 11 Objectively speaking, better. Objectively speaking, Bam is not making the playoffs. It, it almost mathematically it's not impossible yet but it is almost mathematically impossible well let me just the rest see of the, the well let, let me see the rest of their okay. schedule the They've other got thing all is their things lsu lsu plays bama at the end of the year in baton rouge in Baton. yeah i'm um, give me bama for that one but that's it but, that's that's a very interesting game yeah uh missouri, and I mean, look at, oh, look, missouri this week my god alabama's about to dog walk missouri and the worst part is they're going to get credit for a top 25 win when missouri's garbage oh that's disgusting uh lsu that's a big one ever one key point for that is 
Bam will have a bye week going into that game. I, I think that'll help them out. Then they get their cupcake Mercer. They're going to destroy Oklahoma and it's the iron bowl. So we can't, we, you know, it's there's no guarantees in the iron bowl, but Al- Alabama is going to win that game. Uh, I, I will but, also but Grant, say this, this is... real quick about Bama right now. Um, I was listening to a couple of shows and there are some, some pretty tapped in people in the college football media who may or may not be suggesting that there has already been a dinner with uh, multiple pretty powerful boosters at Alabama football discussing the DeBoer buyout already, uh, which I, I think might be a little bit crazy, guys. It, it is yeah, I don't know fun. if I'd be doing that. However, I will say this. Um, Kalen DeBoer has in seven games pretty much stripped Alabama down away from everything that made them great under Saban. Uh, so they are so, not tough up front and they are undisciplined. If you're going to be Grant, soft, at least be disciplined. And if you're going to be undisciplined, at least be tough. All right. Let's, tough. let's look at, let's look at the current situation, right? Bama on the outside looking in. Okay. A and M. I expect them to hold win on. out. Then they're all hold play. on, hold on, but hold sure. on. It's no gimme, first of all. No, yeah, and yeah. one, it's not, it's I, I not even that, guaranteed though. to be an auto bid because I'm about to no, get into this. No, I into SD teams auto win, but go on. I'm about to get into on, why yeah. it's not not a guarantee because it doesn't matter yeah. whether or not they're tended to. It matters how many other teams in the SEC are also ranked above them. You can have multiple other teams in the SEC who might have that record or better. I, okay? I get what you're so, saying, but so like, but, I mean, let's just go through this. Let's just go through this. Ten and two, Bama. Let's just let's just go through this. All right, let's go through this. Sure. First of all, yeah, yeah. Texas A&M play LSU this week. All right. Very yeah, big game. At college for station at college station. Very big game for SEC implications. Okay. Yeah, after that, a close your eyes, hide game. After that, Look. you play South Carolina minus one player, South Carolina, not a big issue. Okay. You play New Mexico state minus one player. Grant, I said minus one player. It's one specific player in South Carolina. Other than that. South, South Carolina. Don't call, don't count out October, but go on. But LSU and Texas are the two teams that they have to play. All right. Those are two teams remaining on their schedule. A&M? LSU, A&M, LSU and Texas. Those are their big opponents. So, the rest of the wow. They, t- tell me A&M's entire rest of the schedule. LSU at South Carolina, New Mexico State at Auburn, and then Texas at home. Yeah, they'll get pretty lucky with their Auburn timing being the week before the Iron Bowl. Uh, yeah, a and it's funny because I expect them to do pretty well down the stretch here. Let, let me say this. It's going to make no sense. But if a and beats LSU, they're losing to Texas. If LSU beats a and they're beating Texas in College Station last week. I, so one way or the other, they're going to pick up one loss and those pick up one I win would enough. think so. I think so, so but then let's again, just I'm say also banking on Texas A&M right now, which is a very bad idea. I'll just say this just though: say, seeing UT, like I, I'm, I'm very close to making a declaration that I will be rooting for the Aggies for that game. I'm very close to making that declaration. Haven't let's done it say yet, but out of that, all right. Let's say they're ten and two. Aggies finish ten and two with that logic, right? They pick up one of those two wins. You're saying yeah, either beat yeah. LSU or beat Texas. Okay, let's go to LSU. All right. Rest of the season, they play Bama, they play AM, and they play Vanderbilt. All right. Those are their current ranked opponents. Other than that, they play Oklahoma and they play who they'll demo and they play Florida, who they'll demo. So I don't know about the Florida. Uh, but well, yeah. Florida, Florida's actually at Florida. It's in Gainesville, so question mark. But uh as of right now, I'm expecting them to beat Bama. It's in Baton Rouge. Um, uh, I wouldn't say I know you I, I, I'd pick Bama to win that, but uh yeah, it's looking good. It, LSU must be feeling pretty good right now. I'd say let's, that's that's where you get say, worried though if you're an LSU let's, fan. You let's want say the they lose one like. of these next games, right? They either lose to Bama or they lose to AM. Let's just say they lose one of those. Or do you want to say two? They end up going nine and three over ten. If they're nine and three, I think it'll be very tough for them to get in, I think. Probably, but I for this hypothetical, let's go with one. You want to go with ten and two or nine and sure, three? Sure, 10, 10 and two. Okay, so we let's now just have create first... a scenario where we have all ten and two teams. Okay, so now we have uh, well, the math's gonna be weird. So now we have a, <laughs> now we have a ten and two LSU and a ten and two uh, A and M. All right, now we go to Georgia. Georgia already has one loss. All right, they play Ole Miss. They play Tennessee. Those Georgia's are winning games. out. 
Okay. So that means they're the number one seed in the SEC. All right. They're at 11 and one. Okay. So now we have three teams technically ranked above uh, LS, uh, Alabama already. All right. Now we go on to Tennessee. Tennessee, two big matchups left in quotation marks are Georgia and Vanderbilt. Lose to Georgia in this hypothetical because Georgia wins out. But other than that, they're also 10 and two. So we have three 10 and two teams and one 11 and one team. You tell me where Bama's getting in there. Uh, so how many total does that four 10 and two teams does that give us? We have so, so, uh, Georgia is 11 and one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Then AM is 10 and two. Okay. LSU is 10 and two. Okay. And Tennessee is 10 and two. We have not gotten to Texas yet. And, and Bama. We have not done Bama yet. We're okay, just going, do I'm going down the line. Let's do Bama. All right. We'll do Texas next, then Bama. I'm going in. Okay. Do Texas order. next. Okay. I Texas would is pick next. Texas will probably win out 11 and one. Texas plays the A&M game. I'm interested, but uh, let's Texas go. Yeah, let's say, let's, let's say, I'll just say 10 and two just for this. We'll just say 10 and two. And then They're going to be 11 and one. But okay. But let's, you know, the A&M I'm cutting, I'm cutting though, Bama some break. I'm cutting Bama with the most LSU, amount of break. Uh, um, Hey, look, I'm would they the now hypothetical have a loss, here is an extra loss. They don't play. Um, they, Texas I'm doesn't thinking. play. Texas doesn't play LSU. Oh, oh okay. Texas oh, plays yeah, A&M. Okay. Um, but let's just say 10 and 10 and two, right? I'm cutting Bama some slack here. Okay. All right. I'm starting to lose track of this, but go on. Next one, get, go. Next one. So right now we have Georgia at 11 and one, yes. followed by four 10 and two teams. Got okay, it. now we're at Clemson, or now we're at Bama. Got it. Missouri, they're going to slaughter. LSU, Auburn, are the big games left. Yeah, I, I, I think losses. they're probably going to win out. Uh, okay, I just did the math. If Alabama's 10-2, and two, they, they went out. They're auto in because they have the best win. They beat Georgia, who will be the SEC champ. It's stupid, Everett. I don't like how this is how it works. They also have the worst they, loss. That won't matter. It's stupid, but it won't matter. Now, like right now, if Georgia wins the SEC, I'll fight. And and if Georgia does end up winning the SEC and Alabama wins out, then Alabama is a hundred percent in. They would jump LSU. They jump Tennessee. Even like they would. It's stupid because Tennessee won head to head. It's like what? How the hell are you going to put Bama over Tennessee? You'll you're you're gonna see it. The college football playoff committee weasel their way into a justification like, well, Alabama's the best win. You'll see it, and you'll rip your hair out as you watch <laughs> it. Because I've been doing this for years now, but like that's that's what they'll do. Currently, Alabama has a forty four percent chance of making the playoffs. Yeah, that sound that sounds so. about right. Like I've said, that forty four is taken into account though, like a potential loss. Like if it's taken, I don't know if they have it. anything on this, but like if if you could say like five thirty eight has this for uh uh or or just the NFL ESPN playoff tracker like starting week sixteen. Like if you could write in Bama wins out, then where are their percentages, then they're in. Yeah. Also, by the way, uh, LSU. The I'd also say Bama team. might actually be kind of hyped on this because they're probably going to avoid the SEC championship game I entirely, honest, which I that, think that they want. True, but if I'm Auburn and I can knock your oh, ass out of the playoffs, ever, ever. Oh no, no, I know that's Auburn's goal right now. I'll be honest, after this past week. They have that Auburn, shit circled. I'm not sure if you saw what Auburn did with Missouri, but Auburn was up, I believe, seventeen three at halftime. Uh, I also heard this Auburn. Uh, I think they were like 98 and one all time history with a 14 plus point lead entering the second half. Uh, they also knocked Missouri quarterback Brady Cook out of the game temporarily. Brady Cook was rushed. Oh, I saw this. Yes. The hospital went to the hospital. Got his shit checked. I, I don't know what exactly happened, but went to the hospital, was in the hospital, MRI. got MRI. his shit then came back from the hospital, came back in the fourth quarter, won Missouri the game. That's our dog of the week. Brady Cook, dog of the week. Absolute dog. I've never heard of anything like that ever. Um, but 
back to Auburn, you losing that game is one of the most pathetic things I have I have ever heard in my life. I mean, wow, what a joke. Uh, like the wheels, the wheels already fell off for Hugh Freeze at Auburn. Um, but now, now the whole wagon is just sinking in, in, in a pile of quicksand to, to go at it. it. Just add a cherry on top. Uh, Auburn's an absolute train wreck. But I will say though, Hugh Freeze knows the one way I keep my job is if I beat Alabama. So everything is being committed to that game right now. And after last year, I throw everything out the window, uh, out the window, like divisional games in NFL, everything out the window for that game. I, like Texas, Oklahoma, I was going to say the same thing, uh, but Oklahoma so ass that sometimes the easy answer is the right one. I hope that's the case for Ohio State, Michigan, but we'll see. I, uh, I don't expect, oh, I think Ohio State's game. a 20 point favorite right now over Michigan. I do not think we're going to beat that by 20. In no. Bama this year is a little bit plus but um, yeah. hey if that game was in jordan hair everett <laughs> uh but being in tuscaloosa i it does make a credible difference that helps like um i would say looking at like the rest uh, of the country though um i'm quite confident that windiana and that's what we're calling them now ever windiana because all they do is win i think windiana is pretty comfortably going to be 11 and one at the end of the year. Uh, yeah, they'll make it. Unfortunately, they're, well, I think they'll like it. They won't be in the Big Ten championship game because Ohio State and Oregon will be, but I think Indiana has a very solid chance of being the number six seed at the end of the bracket and everything. And the SEC team will be at five over them, whichever team doesn't make the SEC championship game or whoever loses it. That's still to be determined. How hard will the committee punish teams for losing a conference championship game that they were only in it in the first place because they earned the right to be there. I think they're going yeah. to punish teams who lose that game, even though that's not how this should be, but I think they will. Like I, my one thought on that is, Hey, Georgia, Texas, let's say Georgia, Texas matchup in the sec championship game. And at the time it was a 12 and 0 tech, or I don't know how, obviously the math doesn't matter, but Texas was 12 and 0. Georgia was 11 and one. If, Georgia beat Texas like how they did and like a bad blowout. I hate to say it, but I don't see how the committee can't wouldn't move that team who got blown out in the conference championship down. Just seeing them get blown out, like that's just leaves a sour, sour taste in your mouth for the last. No, yeah, no, I agree with that. Like Um, if you lose a close game, like that Ohio State Orton game, if Ohio State lost that game, then no, they won't knock Ohio State. But there's a potential you get blown out. You you will drop. Uh, yeah, I'll say uh, last little co- college uh, football thing. Uh, going back to Georgia, Texas a little bit. Kirby's stuff that he was doing up front was like actually straight out of a lab magician. The disguises he was doing, Texas had no idea what they were doing. Uh, and I would say something that kind of reminded me looking back to Georgia, Alabama is that both of those fronts both of those uh, O-lines were also getting their ass handed to them in the run game. Uh, Georgia and Bama's O-line were, were getting destroyed on running back runs uh, in all games. And so I'm thinking, you know, this year, I'm not sure if there's any team who's pretty confident in their O-line. I, I don't think anybody is. And that could lead to some gross, yucky, ugly football games come playoff time, come down the stretch. Just a lot of sacks, offenses can't get, can't get anything done on the ground like we might be seeing some some boring brand of football here with, with the big boys uh but that that's one thing i'm noticing this year like last year michigan's o-line excellent dominant one of the best units i've ever seen washington's o-line last year unbelievable uh, like ridiculous you could teach o-line clinics with, with what they're doing but this year no, there's no O line in the country that compares to to some of the better O lines we've seen in the past years. Every sure. every O line is down this year. There, there is no O line that's dominant, run you over like how Michigan was or Georgia past couple of years. No, nobody's built like that right now. Uh, but I would say 
there there's a lot of stars all around uh, on the defensive line like every single team at this point has at least one edge who's just a straight dog so you know we we could be seeing some boring football uh and the reason i didn't bring that up uh i forgot to say this last week but ohio state's left tackle josh simmons is out for the year he's he's out for the year got hurt in the oregon game and before he got hurt ohio state I'm talking run game here. He plays left tackle, obviously. The pass offense is his biggest impact. But Ohio State went from averaging like eight yards per carry before he got hurt to under three yards per carry after oh, he got geez. hurt. Um, Ohio State's going to have to figure out how to fix the run game without your one of the best left tackles in the country now being out for the year. Uh, good news is, most other teams also have the same problem. Everybody's working around it. Uh, like there is no super team this year. Like, like that, that's just true. No, there is no team that is elite in all four phases, uh, pass offense, run offense, run defense, pass defense. Nobody is. Uh, that's what right. makes this year so crazy. Um, yeah. Also before, before we, uh, before we move on to the NFL, which I have something to start us with, um, I'm just curious. I want to get your Heisman rankings right now because there was a quote, which I'm sure you saw that came out. Travis Hunter. Travis Hunter. Obviously, Ash and Genty kind of responded to it. He was like, yo, dude. I didn't hear Genty's response. Genty's response was essentially, dude, I respect you. Like, you're doing amazing stuff, but I also am doing something that we haven't done. Right? So Travis Hunter was comparing his Heisman trophy. And this is where, this is Dion saying, like, I like a dog. Like, dude, I respect you. Preach for yourself, right? But also, like, let's try and have some sportsmanship here. Like, be a yeah. little bit like, hey, hey, I respect, I see, I see you, yeah. right? No, I would say basically if, what yeah. what Travis Hunter said was he's like, hey, y'all see Ash and Genty, uh, but it's not like we haven't had good running backs, uh, but and we haven't, we just haven't had a player play both ways, and I'm doing that. One, that's some BS. We have had players play both ways. That. that happens yeah like charles charles woodson was more recent than barry sanders in in college football so that's incorrect uh also i gotta shout out my dog real well before i get to my dog um minnesota legend uh people forget uh anthony barr started off as a running back uh at ucla miles jack also another ucla guy he started off as a running back we see both our players and i gotta shout out ohio state god chris gamble he was like Ohio State's like natty year O two, like he he played both ways every snap of the game. Like I, like I recently had asked my dad this. I was like, "Wait, did Gamble start both ways?" And my dad's like, "Yeah, Gamble started both ways." Uh, I will say though, I'm not taking anything away from Travis Hunter. He's one of my favorite players to watch. I love watching him. I love Colorado football games this year almost must watch tv they are the most entertaining but, football games out there right now uh but, but what genty's doing is we we haven't we haven't seen this ever and the other thing about genty is people can sit there and be like he plays nobody he, he plays a bunch of bombs for the rest of the season at this point that is correct so he is playing some bombs but it's not like his o-line's mauling over everyone he has a 30 yard gap to run through untouched he's breaking like six ta- he's doing like derrick henry angry runs uh it, like it, it's not like he's getting untouched and he's just more athletic than everybody like it, it's not a high school highlight tape is what i'm getting at like it, it's not like some random high school running back who's putting up three thousand yards like he's earning his yards he's getting hit at the line of scrimmage breaking tackles uh, and then picking them up that way uh the other facts, Grant, like, I also would just Ashton like to... Genty in just yards after contact is second in the country in rushing yards this year, Everett. So, yeah, he also, by the way, um, he put up 192 on Oregon. And that, well, well, that, but also the other week uh, against Hawaii, he put up like 186 yards, a touchdown on like 19 carries. Everett, that lowered his season averages. Yeah. I, I also just really quick, I um Genty's have, number one. Him and Travis Hunter need to be there. They need yeah, to be there. I have um Barry Sanders 1988 schedule, just for reference. I would love to hear it. I'll be honest, I'm not quite 
can't I say I, I there's no rankings. What his schedule, there's no yeah, rankings fine, on here, fine. so I don't know if that's he played okay. ranked opponents or not. But let's for the sake of this, this is I, I have a general yeah. knowledge of who was good at that time, so I think I could Miami, Ohio. Okay. Texas A and M. All right. It was not good then back then. Tulsa. Colorado. Nebraska. Mizzou. K State. Oklahoma. Kansas, Iowa State, Texas Tech, and Tokyo. What? <laughs> in November in, or October? In, in December, December 4th in Tokyo. In the Tokyo Dome. Is that a bowl game? December 4th. What oh, yeah, game sorry. Is... Coca Cola. Okay. Coca Cola. Okay. I was about to say, what? What and, college football uh, game is in December? Versus, versus why? I guess they had two bowl games that year. I don't know, but versus Wyoming, December thirtieth, Sea World holiday. What, go go look up Oklahoma State Nebraska eighty eight. That that game will confirm how great he was. If he put up like three hundred yards, four touchdowns, yeah, no, nah, he he's better than Genty. Let's see. Um, what did he do against Nebraska in '88? I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking. Answer this question. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying to find it. Let's just see. Barry Sanders. I need to like actually get his like stat page from that season. Oof. 1988. Can I get? Can I get like a game log? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to find. It's a little bit hard. Um. Uh. Box score. I have it here. Hold on. Gotta do some research here. This is like it's just hard. Like this far back. All right. And like three really... three Google searches. I got it. Okay. Against Tulsa, he put up three hundred four yards, five touchdowns. Uh, against Nebraska, they ended up losing the game sixty three forty two, hundred eighty nine yards, four tubbies. Uh, their Oklahoma. That that'd be their other big time game. Uh, two hundred fifteen yards, two tubbies. Uh, they ended up losing both those games uh, very close. Uh, I'm not going to give him any flack for that. Uh, but yeah, no, he, yeah, Barry Sanders is an axe murderer. If there's one thing, though, I will say that uh, gives Genty some props. Barry Sanders probably got 35 touches a game. Uh, Genty's putting up his 204 on like 18 touches a game. Um, so yeah, in that he, he's case, getting cut. He's stopping by halftime, by the way. Keep in mind, yeah. Barry Sanders played. Oh, the other week, game. Ashton. Oh, yeah. No, the other week, Genty had, I think, 189 yards and three touchdowns. I was looking it up. Everett, that was his first quarter stats, and he got benched rest of the game. <laughs> what? You almost put up 203 tubbies in a court? Nah, uh uh. Hell no. Hell no. I'm sorry that I just got Connor Wegman on all you guys right there, but hell no. Uh, give me my shoes back, bruh. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, no, G- Genty for Heisman. Genty for Heisman. Uh, like the rest, I'll be honest. Also, I haven't for even all really you thought. sickos who are like Travis Hunter, just enjoy watching Ashton Genty. We are watching something that you will not see for I don't know how many more you years. May you never may never see, see it, again. it again. Just enjoy it. Yeah, Travis Hunter may be a dog, but I guarantee you we will see another two. Travis player Travis Hunter is a dog. We'll he is a dog. That it, he is a dog. What Genty's doing though, the Michael Myers, I mean, just yeah. everything. Everything. By the way, Jameer Gibbs pulled that shit out against us. I was not excited. I saw him just sitting. There. I was like, Jesus, this is gonna be a long day. He proceeded yeah. to rip a twenty-six yard touchdown off on that. So, uh, but okay, all right, all right. Um. Grant, let, let, let's move into some NFL. We'll wrap up with some MLB action. Um, first of all, I just want to say we're, we're recording this Monday night. Monday night games are on right now. I just saw a second and goal from the 50-yard line in the Ravens-Bucks game. Yeah, I'll be honest. I'm, I'm currently locked into my bolts right now for the hidden Monday night game on ESPN Plus only. <laughs> I love the NFL. That's how, that's how you hide the Herbert sucks in prime time stuff that will be spewed online i will also say fun fact of the day ever um do you know what herbert's record is all time in away monday night football games i don't know how many games he's played he's played so four no. total games where he was on the road for monday night do you know what his One, record three. is four and oh never lost uh so hey. yeah uh people will sit there spewing this herbert shit and it's just like you respectfully and i don't blame you 
Um, but you've never watched the Chargers play. Do not comment on my football team. And I, I don't blame you for not watching the Chargers because I wouldn't watch them either. You if I wasn't me? forced you to me specifically, the general world. No, not not you specifically, but the world. Hey, I mean, yeah, no, I don't I don't blame anybody on that one. Um, oh, if you told me I have never watched a Chargers football game in the past decade, I'd be like, huh, lucky for you. I, I wish I was you. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, the the amount of years I'd have back on my life if I wasn't watching the Chargers for the past decade, at least another 20, 20 that I've lost. Uh, but uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really know how much there is to touch on in the NFL. Like most of the things, yeah, I, uh, you know, Texans, Packers, they they had an interesting uh, ending. Um, Vikings, yes. Lions was very close down in the wire at the end. Uh, you know, the game. I'm gonna be weeks, honest. The- uh, let, well, first of all, the 49ers might officially be dead. Oh, um, yeah. Um, Debo uh, Samuel has pneumonia. He's out. I think George Kittle got hurt. Um, yeah, I tore not... his shit twice. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Not, uh, yeah, uh, not... yeah I, I had the I had the realization on Sunday that um, it, there's over a 10% chance the Chiefs do not lose a game this year in 3P. Like, like it, it's over 10%. I'm not saying it's a great shot, but if, oh, Everett, I thought Michigan winning would crush me. I, I thought getting bounced by the Padres would crush me. But if I have to watch the Chiefs repeat with an undefeated seat, oh, Everett, I, I don't know. I don't know anymore what I can do when it comes to the NFL and my fandom. I, I think I'd have to retire. Yeah, I will say Brock pretty throwing three interceptions, not... Uh, yeah, no, no, no. It, but also, but, but Mahomes had a gross pick. Like, it, the Chiefs didn't even play good. Patrick oh. Mahomes does not look does not look good. No, I him. know, he but they're easy. still winning. That's what makes me horrified because I know in the playoffs he won't be making these mistakes. Like, huh, they're, yeah. they might be undefeated. Um, Look, I'm gonna. I'm gonna I don't see a loss on their schedule. Like, I'm talk about the Vikings Lions game right now. Um, Vikings secondary. Where the fuck were you? Where? What, what was going on? What? What's going on? What? Like, did you just decide to take the afternoon off? Like, did you stay in Cancun off the bye week? Like, tell me, where were you guys on uh, on Sunday afternoon? Do we have to put you out a, in the a of- milk carton missing picture? I need to put out an APB. That's that's what I need to file a missing persons. Um, Get an amber alert going. Huh. Yeah, that that's that's what's what's going on. Um, the Lions literally only ran dagger. I think Jared Goff threw downfield twice the whole game. There was one drive where they, I shit you not, it was like Madden. It was like spamming tight end attack. They literally just ran dagger for. Five consecutive plays, and every time, oh no, Amon Ra is just right, wide open over the middle. Let's just throw it right to him. Like, yeah, seriously. I was five, also six just consecutive thinking. Plays. Side note: Watching this game, like, dude, Alex Anzalone has to be a Viking with Van Ginkle. Like, what are we doing? Like, <laughs> oh my god, it's right there, guys. Like, it now, is right now look, there. I will say, I love you're going back. You know, coming back. The, the biggest thing I will take out of this: we lost, but we did show we can play from behind. That's what Matt, like, cause we had never been, we, this was the most we'd been behind all season. We yeah. were behind for 28 minutes of game time before this game. We were behind for like two minutes. All right. And I will say, I liked seeing that like, even with the ineptitude of our secondary and the ineptitude of, of Sam Darnold at times in this game and the play calling, we only lost by two. We, we were a missed two point conversion, which happened by the way, we, we missed a two point conversion, Ooh. a missed two point conversion away from, having the tie game going and going into OT, right? Which I would have felt great about. Ooh. But what I will say is you get to the end of the game, you're going to ice it, right? It yeah. is, I think there's like 2.30 left. You're at midfield, right? You go, for, it's it's third and four. You go for it. You don't get, uh, you don't get the conversion, right? You go third for and it. Four, what, what, what is, where, what's the down distance on this fourth down? Fourth and four. It's fourth and four. four. Okay. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm no, saying it's third and four. No, but I'm saying it's third and four. It's incomplete. They decided to punt it instead. You go for that. On what yard you, line? Like the R48 with 230 left. How are you not going for that? You what? go for that. I don't understand. Like you're playing it safe. With like you trust what, the five minutes left? 
No, like 2.30. Well, then you like have to go else. for it. Or like 3.30. We didn't go for it. I don't. I don't understand that call. I know you're relying on your defense, but there's a certain point where you just have to no, you you go play like it. you got to go. You have to play like it. they're going to score. Yeah. Like you have to play like they're going to score. Um, so we don't understand that secondary was was booty cheeks. The one thing I will say, this is the first time I saw something happen. I've never seen happen in the NFL before. We got down, uh, threw the ball down. Uh, uh, it was like ten seconds that we got about ten seconds that we threw the ball down to like the thirty. They're like forty yard line ish maybe 45 run up, spike the ball as the ball hits the ground clock winds out, right? Game's technically over referees call a penalty on the Vikings for not having all the linemen set because Darisaw was in our backfield five yard penalty. Uh, we get the ball back with one second. So clock object- stop there clock stops at one second with the penalty. So we got minus five yards. We had a chance to throw a Hail Mary. Didn't throw a hail. Well, we got sacked. First of all, what the how the fuck are you getting sacked on a three man rush and a hail mary? Ed Ingram, I got some questions for you. Okay. Um. Next thing. No. Yeah, I was watched that my first. I am, the play before they rush nobody, and I was like, I'm not sure if this is the strategy. I am. Nobody. I am so unbelievably. So first of all, Will Will Riker nails to this point. Uh, yeah, he I was, the, I was gonna Vikings, say he has the Vikings record for second and third most longest field goals. In well, I also think he's the only kicker who um, hasn't missed yet this year. I, I believe he's yeah, the only he, one. He, he is, Here's the other thing. Kevin O'Connell said if there was no penalty on that five yard, he would have trotted Will Reichert out there to kick a 68 yard field goal. And I shit you not. You think it, if you were to tell me up? Hail Mary or 60 yard, give me the 60 yard the field goal. Field. I would. He hit a fifty-eight yarder in that game with, with room, with a lot of room. Okay, all right. Okay. I give hey. me that, and I'm disappointed we didn't get the opportunity for that. So it, I will just oh. also say the kickers are so good now. Like, it's let's not crazy maybe, to say in five years, sixty yarders are the new fifty. Th- that wouldn't be crazy. I just want to. Let's practice some two point plays. All right. Let's let's work on that a little That's, bit. That needs to be a staple in the NFL. Let's, let's work on that a little bit. Every team needs to have a, um, a, a 15 play catalog at minimum, should be more, but, but at least 15 two uh, point plays. Corners need to be running laps all week. Don't know what the fuck was going on there. I will just say I am happy we did this without, we lost by two without TJ Hawkinson. Keep that in mind. No TJ Hawkinson in this game. That's He's good. coming back, Grant. He's coming back. Oh, yeah. No, no, so, no. I, I, and, uh, I think uh, one thing about TJ that I, I think is going to be a, a very big impact that you're, I, I, I'm not sure if it's highlighted that much, but I, I think the, the biggest winner of getting TJ Hawk back is going to be Aaron Jones. Gets a little chip help on the edge. Aaron, Aaron Jones is going to have some bright days ahead. Um, Blake Cashman, who is t- are typically our starting inside linebacker, was also out for this game with turf toe. Was so, it Payson Metellus inside? Because I know Pace had that safety, but yes. Who wh- who who else would have been inside? I'm Ivan just checking Pace, box and then Gruger Gruger Hill, Kamu Gruger Hill is the other inside linebacker. Oh my so. god, Gruger Hill had one tackle. I, they were running a that lot of cover thing. zero. That could be that, that, that could have been the problem right game. there. That could have been it. But anyways, that that's just my little spiel on on the Vikings, like. If you look at any of these charts, bro, Van Ginkle, Vikings, eight, holy shit, two sacks, three TFLs. The Viking was on. I don't. Him. I also don't remember if he's on a multi-year contract. I, for the Vikings' sake, I really hope he is. Yeah, um, he's and hair. You can't let him walk. Yeah, what? But, but um, the Vikings and the Lions literally went fist, uh, you know, punch for punch. Like their st- statistics in the game literally split down the middle even same amount of yards same amount of rushing yards passing touch like everything split yeah i'm checking i'm checking recap right now one stat that i saw everett that blew my mind i saw that uh jared goff i was pressured i think on either 15 or 16 dropbacks on those dropbacks where he was blitz he was perfect 15 for 15 or 16 yeah see the issue we uh uh, we were running cover zero on those plays and that's when we ran into the issue of oh we're just gonna let amon ross sit in the middle of the field and jared goff can check down to him 
Sounds like a plan, Vikings defense. Something I don't understand I was, what we're doing here. Something I was looking into, like going into this game, uh, a matchup that I saw and, and was trying to keep my eye on was uh, Byron Murphy uh, against Jamo. Yeah, no, now, he got waxed. Well, Jamo didn't do much, but Byron Jamo Murphy did, did yeah, get waxed okay. in zone coverage. Okay, I was just surprised though. Jamo non-factor in this game. I I thought if there's a matchup where maybe the lines would want to go after Jamo versus Byron Murphy, but I think I, th- I also think that he was playing against Shaq Griffin more than he was playing with Byron Murphy. Okay, Byron Murphy okay. is our corner three, technically speaking, right now. Yeah, I don't, I I just read somewhere online being like watch um, out for this matchup uh, yeah well, this is also like ryan first... flores was like let's just not do that matchup let's not put this is also the uh the first time that the that kevin o'connell has ever lost a game when even or winning the turnover mark. oh still undefeated yeah, when I winning the turnover that stat. Mark. i love but, that well stat. still 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 overall uh positive like you know undefeated when uh winning the turnover margin but currently speaking one loss while which is still great i think he's like 22 and one but oh, yeah, no, no. when you're, you're gonna take that in week. Turnover margin should still be undefeated but uh the viking secondary clearly didn't want that one uh yeah that, that's that's my qualm um but yeah that's, yeah that's, I, I, mean, I would I mean, say uh yeah if there's anything else like really to to go over in the nfl um uh oh yeah jane daniels injury i think he should be back I think he should be chilling. Don't don't think it's long term for him. Uh oh, yeah. Um, the Jets are dead. Deader than dead. Mo- so unbelievably dead. Um what what a disaster. The New York Jets. Uh, they're obviously not gonna win anything, make any noise right now with Aaron Rodgers at quarterback. Uh, but they're kind of locked into him because he runs the org. So yeah, it's kind of a little bit like LeBron on the Lakers right now. A little bit. Minus the ship, of course. Oh, what about the prophecy of, uh, I know this was happening six months ago. With with LeBron? With LeBron. How he lies? Oh, uh, there could be a little bit of that too. Uh, yeah, uh, Devontae Adams looks like he already wanted to be traded. Uh, there's a great screenshot of him going around. Uh, Mike Dobb probably going to get traded back to LA soon. Uh, but also more importantly, free free my guy Garrett. Free him. Like when I made that TikTok, Everett, <laughs> when I made that TikTok years ago, how situation in the NFL matters. And there are a certain number of franchises where they will ruin a player's career. Well, it's looking pretty good for Garrett right now. Uh, and Everett, I would also say my JMO takes looking pretty, pretty tasty. I don't think JMO's really doing shit in Detroit. Uh, so yeah, no, I I knew it. Yeah, situation can ruin players. That that is true. Um, uh, yeah, free Garrett and also free Olave. Get him the hell out of New Orleans. Yeah, I, Grant, uh, free all of my guys. JSN, way, get him uh, out of Seattle tonight. Hey, please. he's starting. He's starting now. He's DK's dead. I don't care. I get him out. Get him out. Gone. But uh, yeah, the uh, the gink uh, two year contract. So he has one more year after. Good for you. Yeah, no, I would say the very first move in the off season is sign Alex Anzalone. Well, so we no, the, the very Viking first duo. move is is extending Kevin O'Connell. That's still has that. Well, well, okay, but but vibes. The very first thing you do: sign Alex Anzalone, get the double Vikings off the edge. Ooh, ooh, good luck blocking that, Everett. A little Nordic <laughs> heat off the edge. Good luck. You're gonna need chip help for that shit. Uh, but yeah, I'd say you know, the, I'd say the the good thing for you right now is, hey, you're still five and one. It was a very close game. Uh, you still got pieces coming back. Uh, you're all right. You're all right. Yeah, Rams on Thursday. Um, we'll see how that goes. I'm if hearing cups you... looking like he's gonna. They're gonna practice him this week and see. We'll see how that goes. I mean, you guys know my my thoughts on Cooper Cup, dudes. Yeah, I if mean, you thought I will... Anthony Davis was glass man, boy, let me tell you about another guy in L.A. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'll just I'll just say I you know I think if the Vikings lose this game, we we will have to uh, reflect on things because I'm gonna this start next game. Who do you guys play next? Rams on Thursday. Oh, 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 yeah, shit. We're gonna, uh, I'm gonna start winning. getting some at I'm home. Gonna start getting some uh 2018 deja vu. Uh, at no, home? it's in LA. It's in LA. Oh, well, that doesn't matter. There's no such thing as LA Rams fans, so you're fine. 
Um, but okay, Grant, let's let's talk about the MLB. It's a Sam Darnold homecoming game. You'll be chill. In that regard, yeah, it's more <laughs> of a KOC homecoming game than it is a Sam Darnold one. No, but, no, I was just playing with the Dar. I, um, he does not care. Uh, but uh, no. okay, Cam Akers. Um, but uh, yeah, okay. So let's let's move into the MLB. We got a lot of. I mean, God. Yeah. Uh, you know uh, what? I, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start with something. Grant. There's so, oh, there's so much to start with. I, I can, don't even know. I can say where when I'm wrong. I can admit it. I was calling for Dave Roberts' head. I've been doing that for over a year now. Um, this is my official letter letter of, uh, of apology to to Dave Roberts. Um, yeah, no, I I appreciate. I you know what, Dave, I yeah. I would have if you lost that game versus the Padres, I would have asked for you to be fired. Um, I would have been, I wouldn't have been asking. I, it, it was going to be more than an ask. It was, it was going to be some pitchforks. All right. But, um, no, you, uh, you proved me wrong. You stepped up. Uh, you also learned from your mistakes. I asked for change. You applied change in, in the best way possible, then proceeded to apply it in the worst way possible. Learn from that way, I, that I mistake, would, and then yeah. applied it again in the best way possible. I so, would say specifically for this Met series, nearly every ask you've had, Dave did it the next it day. Did, Quite he did, did he, I don't know if he listened. Every single to this. ask you had, he did the he, next he day. He did do it. And you know what? And hey, you know, this thing, Dave Roberts showed me that, you know, we've been getting on him. I've been getting on for the approach of the past times we've been bouncing. I'm like, we're, we're too patient up there. We, we need to be the teams who make it to the world series hit the most home runs and strike out the most. I've been like, Oh you gotta change yourself. I'm like, Oh, the team mentality. You're not good enough. Like ever. I think Dave is quite literally the perfect manager for the LA Dodgers in like every single set. Like now. I, are there things to still clean up grant? I, yes. I would say sure, but, but it's like, Hey, but, look at the but, cards he's dealt. It, like it is, it has been, he this is, is hard outside. to do. Outside a few games, he has managed this postseason immaculately. And for the sole fact, it, we could have lost the Mets series, um, but for the sole fact that he went, what, 33 innings without a run with basically yeah, some band-aids and the stitches. The postseason record for consecutive shutout innings. Yeah, look, hey, we learned. Don't pitch Landon Knack, all right, Dave? I appreciate yeah, some that. experimentation. Hey, hey, we know But that now, now. We know. we know. Hey, now we, we know. know. We know. Stupid idea. Very I'll stupid say, idea. I hate to inform you, but, like, Knack's going to need to pitch three innings game four. I'm just telling you that now. Hopefully the game will be over by then, either on our side or theirs. But, I like, I'm, I'm telling you right now, like, <laughs> Landon Knack is going to have to pitch innings in this. Like, we do not have arms. We are, we are, we got, we're running right now. Uh, it's that one um, Louis Vuitton backpack meme, literally dangling by a thread right now. Like it. <laughs> if but look, one I, I, will, I don't know injury right now. Like Vessia was enough. We shouldn't be able to win. I, I don't hate hey, it. We might get Vessia are. and Bruised our back. I'm just saying, yeah. like it's possible. Um, but then let's do say... two bullpen. Let's arguably do bullpen game for game one. Oh, we're looking pretty damn good in those. Like, uh, I just don't pitch Knack in the second, then yeah. But uh, look, I will say, I just Dave has taken a very monumental step in his managerial career from, yeah, from he's the last the two series compared to the last years. four years. Yeah. And I will say, he, I, I do think, I do think that if he had not beaten the Padres, there would be... Yeah, no, I would be calling for his head too. No, but it would be, even internally, I feel like there would be an observable question. I could see that. And I think, I I think that that. this, you know what, he, he, back against the wall was, I guess, what he needed to take a leap on something, which he would not have done any other year. Hung his nuts on the lines and And, screw it. And I, that's what the team needed, I think. Because in the past, we haven't seen that. And this has kind of been the two series where we have really seen Dave just be like, hey, you know what? Fuck it. We ball. You know what? It's the yeah. it's the South Park meme of uh, I don't know what the that the guy with the his balls in the wagon, right? Oh yes, that, yes. That that's what Dave decided to do for these last two series. Randy, Randy to, Marsh with his massive I have, nuts. I have to wheelbarrow. <laughs> I have to command him. I have to commend him on that. Um, yeah, we're we're gonna have to give. I do also want to say, flowers. Grant, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to do this. If 
the Dodgers win this World Series, is Shohei Otani the greatest MLB player to ever? Oh, play? he already is. Oh, he already is. There was a there was remember we had this debate a while ago. And it was uh, oh, yeah, old yeah. school versus new school. And it's going to be yeah, the old school yeah. guys like, hey, yeah, you, yeah. you need the penance, right? If he wins this this World oh, Series. Oh, so you're asking, will the old heads I'm be saying like, unanimously, yeah, he's better than babe. Okay. Unanimously that, greatest let's talk of all time. This is what I'm going to have to say. Uh, Keeping in mind, World Series after this year will help a lot. Don't give me, like, that'll help a lot. Um, But I... Actually, the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Because, let me start with this. There's not a doubt in my mind, Everett. Zero doubt in my mind. If you want free money, folks, go do it right now. But Shohei Otani is without doubt winning MVP next year. His first year pitching in LA. He's going to lead the MLB in war quite easily because he's going both ways. He's going to win MVP next year. Everett, he won MVP last year, AL MVP, but that'll be a three-peat MVP, which I don't think has ever been done before in the MLB. Um, And I will say, normally speaking, I would be like, it won't happen, but for the fact that Shohei is literally the so MLB right now. I think they will be okay giving him four straight. Then I, then I, I can't see, but then again, no, 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 like, the MLB voters probably do want to give him five straight because then that will be a record that will stand end of time, like maybe across all sports. Yeah, there gets to be voter fatigue. True, true, true. I just think though, like right now, the voters are just absolutely enamored with it. They love Shohei, right, right now. It could get to a stage where it's a little crazy, but at least right now, without doubt, three straight MVPs, he'll win it next year. Four straight, I'm leaning more likely than not. And if they can give him that fourth one, then I think I also am just gonna say this. And it, it would when not... that hap- if that happens, then there's zero debate. The world Look, series Sh- don't Shohei, even matter. He's the goat. Shohei would not have probably had as many home runs if he was pitching, but let's still say he has 50. Well, we think that, but like Shohei has said himself, he he personally feels like he, he hits plays better, better when, he when he's pitching because but, he's but just Grant. so invested it, in the game the, it, this already was one of the greatest single seasons from a player of all time it Joe was Hattani. the greatest single season ever 50 it, it was if if let's not forget what Okunia did last year too by the way that needs that's no i know 40 response. 70 but, crazy but 50, but 50, uh um if shohei otani tani even had was pitching this year and even had a three nine era oh yeah no no, no. yeah people there's never topping absurd, anything but yeah, yeah if no, he just if pitched, he pitched one pitch like gr- unanimously the and i think that would be even if he didn't win the world series that would be enough to be like hey take shohei greatest to ever do it oh yeah no um, yeah no no like forget the world I, I think, series and stuff just if he can if he can pitch five full seasons as a Dodger, I just and I, I think that might even be pushing it. But if he could do that, then just personally speaking, I can't give a greatest of all time designation to somebody who didn't win at least once. I could be like, yo, greatest baseball player, but not the greatest of all time, if that makes sense. Oh, sure. You know, so yeah, I'll jump on that. That, with that you. is that like yeah, currently fair. Shohei Otani, greatest single baseball player to ever play. Yeah, yeah, not the great, greatest great player. Time. Player, if player. he wins this world, if he wins a World Series with the Dodgers, yeah, obviously he wins this it first this opportunity. Year, if he wins it this year, there's no conversation. Like I don't want to get ahead matter. of myself, but like ever, like I might have to, I might, I might age forty years this off season if we win the World Series. Just reading articles all day on the like, I might become a seventy year old man. If we win it this year, because I'll just be obsessed. But with Grant, let's let, let's uh, let's look a little bit towards uh, this. Well, this real quick, I, I want a slight slight recap. Uh, just the past two two series, very briefly. Uh, I I genuinely can't believe this team has made it this far. When you consider all the factors, like like before the season started, we both sat here and we're just like, 
yeah, Otani's not even pitching this year. Like, I don't even know when Kershaw will be back. No, we were both like, next year destroyed. is the year. Next yeah. year's the year. We probably playoffs, is the year. but there's nothing, you know, it's not yeah. going on. Yeah, no, I said like, you know, you're you're kind of a, a dummy if you're expecting the Dodgers to win it all last year or this year at the start of the season with the circumstances. But when Acuna and Strider went down for the year, Atlanta what wasn't quite the, the boogeyman. I, you know, I was thinking, you know, based on competition, we have injuries, but it's not like Otani is out for the year. And well, Glasnow, what you get what I'm saying. And Kirsch, but for the Braves, those injuries hurt every that pitcher, more yes. than it did for us. Uh but despite all of those setbacks, uh, I, I was still aware that 2025 and beyond is likely the death the Death Star years. But no, Everett, um, Tommy Tommy Edmund was absolutely unbelievable picking up the MVP for the ML. Uh, Mookie Betts absolutely electric, uh, unbelievable. We've been asking for this for for years. Mookie and- finally put it together. He Mookie. heard enough of the shit and just, I don't know what, what it was, hey, but he finally figured Mookie, it out. Mookie even admitted after the, that breakout game against San Diego, like Mookie was saying like, hey, I'll be on it. Like he was talking to, to David Ortiz and the Fox booth. He was like, hey, I'll admit like, yeah, like it, it was getting to me that that hitless streak of 22 straight. He was like, yeah, like I, that's all I could think of for the past three years that I just I don't do shit for this team in October. He was like, it was getting to me. And like, it was clearly impacting my play because I was thinking about it, but it, it seems like we've just had I, that. I, I will always go back. Removed, you know, that I, weight's just off I don't back. know what it was, but the one day he reportedly spent 12 hours in the batting cage. Before oh yeah, it was right game. after that, actually. You know Once what, actually, fun fact, Everett, that- I got a little fun story. Uh, an un, you know, an an uncredited hero for us, which you probably, hey, after this season, you may literally never see him pitch ever again. I have no idea, but um, the unsung hero for us is Brent Honeywell. Uh, Brent Honeywell. Yes. yes. Uh, the he had one of the one of the greatest greatest interviews I've I've ever watched. Um, after last night with, with him and Muncie. Uh. And he also had an excellent quote after game five, where obviously we got we got shelled. Uh, but in that game, Honeywell came in. We're we're down, I don't know, I think like seven, one, eight, one. He comes in, gives three innings, gets those outs. Uh, and after the game, there was a quote where they asked Honeywell, like, you know, how, how do you feel? You, you went deep uh in this start. You you got a lot of innings. How did you know what are what are your thoughts, rest of the series moving forward? And uh he pretty much just said, like, yeah, we have dogs in our bullpen uh, who are much better than I am. Uh, so if I got to go out there, give us four innings, then so be it. And he was like, let the dogs eat. That's what he said. Let the dogs eat. Talking about our bullpen arms. Uh, the dogs the dogs ate in a game six bullpen game. Uh, they, they absolutely ate. And we we got to give some some credit to, to Honeywell for, for coming in and, and giving us... Um, those innings and getting those outs for us, despite it being a, a game where it was lost, we're not winning. We, we still need to, to get outs. We still need to, you know, finish the game to save the bullpen. Uh, and he went in and did that. But the other thing that, that really stuck out to me, Muncie was saying this too, because uh, Honeywell won't give himself flowers, but Muncie was saying after his appearance in game five, where he, where he pitched a, uh, I believe three and one third or four innings. Muncie went up to him and said, you're the reason that we are going to win game six to Honeywell. He said, tonight, what you just did, giving us those three innings, you're the reason we're going to go win game six. Uh, Then we obviously did. And also what what Muncie said, bringing up that 12-hour bullpen cage session, uh, I didn't know this, but uh, ever take a wild guess who was throwing Mookie Betts live was, BP. Was it Honeywell? It was Brent Honeywell, who was throwing Mookie Betts live BP. And Muncie said, Muncie said this, Brent Honeywell got Mookie Betts right. You can he thank cured, Brent Honeywell him? for the reason why Mookie got over his slump. He was saying Brent Honeywell 
like literally the day after pitching three playoff innings against Potters and got shot, like the day after pitch live BP destroying his arm long-term for life. He don't care though. We need to win baseball games, destroyed his arm for Mookie to get his confidence back, get his juice. And Honeywell was saying, or the reporter asked like, Oh, so what were you doing for, for Mookie? Like, uh, were you, you know, giving him your screwball, your tough pitches? He was like, nah, fastball is right down the dick. Go hit that shit as hard as you can. <laughs> Mookie. You're Mookie. <laughs> I'm giving you fastballs down the dick. You better hit that shit out. Like, so Brent Honeywell is the unsung hero of this team. He, he gave us eight up innings when we had to, and, and hey, they were meaningless games that we Look, lost. Grant, hey, if I to told you, outs, if I told you twelve yeah. months ago, the reason why the Dodgers would make was the a World dude Series, named Brent Honeywell, hey, is because of a dude named Brent Honeywell and a shortstop named Tommy Edmond. Yeah, what would you say to me? Yeah, I, you'd I, say I, what the fuck? Yeah, I, yeah that's no, exactly I, 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 what you would say to me. Like, excuse me, who? No, I, who I think I, I generally think I might respond like, "Oh yeah," and if the Chargers had Mahomes, Kelsey, and Justin Jefferson, they'd win the Super Bowl. I, th- I probably would have said something like, <laughs> like, like, oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, but yeah, no, um, somehow we we found a way to make it work. Uh, yeah, and Kike decided to be Babe Ruth. So, or Babe Ruth. So, I mean, hey, Kike, he, uh, <laughs> Mac, Max Muncy set the playoff record for consecutive appearances he getting took on like base. Nine walks, which was crazy. It was a lot of walks. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> but I don't care. Like, he refused to get out in New York specifically. Like, I don't think Muncy got out when we played in New York against, I, like, I, I literally don't think he no, got I don't think, out. No, I don't think he did. So, um, but. Yeah. yeah, no, no. We had we had boys step Let's, up, and what you were saying with Dave, he manages his ass off. He only he has two look, and a half starters. We we gotta we gotta wrap in a second. So if there's anything you want to say about this series, unless we want to keep it for next episode, yeah. it's also fine. Well, yeah, um, no, no, I, I'll, I'll wrap with this. Uh, I, I've been saying this for the past couple of years. So, you know, the teams who make it to the World Series, they lead the MLB in home runs. They lead the team in strikeouts, uh, and it's okay to be boomer bust. That that's what I've been telling myself. But this team isn't that. Ever. we're not we're not those past teams we're, we're not the heavy home run uh heavy strikeout teams um the boomer bus formula that that works for an underdog playing up uh, that works for in the phillies you know we're getting the braves past couple of years padres when they when they got us in 22 that boomer bus home run strikeout uh home run or strikeout or nothing formula it works for an underdog team going up against a big dog but everett what if the big dogs are hot themselves? Then what do you do? Uh, this team it is lethal how patient we are. And you do not want to face the Dodgers when the Dodgers are hot. There, there is nobody in the MLB who wants to play the Dodgers when the Dodgers are hot. They are the most terrifying team in baseball when they're hot. And they are right now. Uh, so I, I was talking about with, so, you know, everybody on earth knows at least double digit Yankee fans in their lives. So it's not hard to find one, but I've been asking some Yankees fans and they're drawing a good amount of comparisons to the 2018 Dodgers Red Sox World Series, where both teams were the best teams uh, in their respective leagues all year. Dodgers were the best team in the NL. Uh, Houston was the best team in the, or not Houston, Boston was the best team in the AL. Uh, and then they matched up, but the Red Sox are just a jugger, juggernaut wagon that you couldn't beat. Um, and Everett, I, I think it, we're seeing something similar this year. Dodgers and Yankees were best teams, but this this time the Dodgers are the Red Sox. We, we're the team that's not a fluke. Like hey, we do I, the what star I, what power. Add, We've got what Edmund add, hitting. Dodgers, I think, have the most experience um in this situation 100 this matchup so um many yeah, players we're... have rings or deep playoff experience uh you know i'll, I'll yeah well i'll let you wrap up so last thing i want to say my two slight concerns moving forward is that um the scariest hitter in the series is going to be playing for the new york yankees everett it's a tough pill to swallow but Juan Soto is the most terrifying hitter I've ever watched in my life when, when it comes to baseball. He's the definition of the scary hitter that I talk about, the scary out, where well, he will, I will not say, chase, 
And if you hang something over the middle, that's 440 to right. Uh, the one thing I will say that is true, however, at least the bullpen does have credible experience playing against Juan Soto. So do it. Oh, yeah. No, oh, well. If anything, the one player we have the most scouting and intelligence on is Juan Soto. We've faced yeah. him the most out so. of anyone. Uh, I will end off with this. Uh, slight concern. Um, and to any Yankee fan who's a little concerned about Aaron Judge, I wouldn't be um, in his career. Aaron Judge absolutely owns the Los Angeles Dodgers. Uh, 10 career games, eight home runs, almost a 400 batting average against us. I expect Judge to be a lethal hitter in the series, but we've shown that we can survive lethal hitters. I mean, Viento just posted like a 1400 OPS against us. Uh, Lindor was going crazy. Tatis had like a 1500 OPS against us. We can survive big guy we, we can survive uh three or four ridiculously hot hitters uh because we have like seven hot hitters right now so i'm feeling good i'm feeling damn good yeah and uh and with that um the 49ers last receiver left got shot in the chest two months ago uh with that um <laughs> just how to say that i just had to add that one in the 49ers last healthy wide receiver got shot in the chest two months ago, uh, yeah, but he's back. Jacob Cowan uh, with that count. one. <laughs> thank you. Uh, with that one, thank you guys so much for watching, listening. Guys, five stars. Follow us on Spotify, TV, Twitter, and on Instagram at Waterboy Pod. Uh, follow me and Grant on Twitter at EverySix and at Waterboy Grant. We post new episodes every week. So check us out on YouTube and all podcast platforms. Uh, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, so you don't miss a single episode. We also post exclusive content on Instagram and on TikTok. So make sure to check us out there. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Waterboy's out.